name, but our next speaker is Konstantin Inzevatkin. Uh, uh, yes, I Konstantin Inzevatkin. Yes. Okay, close enough. I okay. Guess. <laughs> Th thank you for present, uh, present my presentation, and um, uh, I will uh, I will start. And uh, my presentation consists of the following sections. Uh, this is a discrete dipole approximation and about a most uh, time and resources, computer resources consuming part of it uh, solving of uh, electric field linear system. Uh, then I will talk about Wenzel Kramer's brilliant uh, approximation with refraction and about some interesting points of using it method, this method. And uh, uh, I will talk about uh, testing results in, in the other program. So a discrete dipole approximation, um, uh, ODDA, uh, solves uh, the uh, direct light scattering problem. Uh, the volume of the scatter is divided into the cubes or dipoles. And uh, the method solves uh, Maxwell's integral equation in the frequency domain using volumetric sampling. And uh, dipole interact with each other and with external electric field. And so we have a linear system for uh, dipole polarization vector vectors or uh, electric field vectors. And usually we, uh, we solve this system uh, using, using iterative algorithm. Um, but uh, in this case, we have to know uh, uh, electric field, internal electric field. Uh, of uh, at the first step of iterative solver. And so uh, we assume that uh, if we will have a more accurate electric field at the first step of iterative solver, we will have uh, better convergence and uh, we can accelerate our calculations. And uh, we use uh, the other program uh, which implements DDA. And uh, the goal of our work is to develop an uh, accurate approximation uh, for the initial field uh, of the iterative algorithm. And uh, um, it works with, with uh, large optical soft particles, um, but not enough. Uh, and we can't use um, a standard algorithm like uh, undisturbed incident electric field or uh, zero electric field. And uh, uh, it, uh, this algorithm, algorithm based on Wenzel Kramer's brilliant approximation, uh, we test uh, on spheres, but um, uh, the method, uh, we, uh, but we want to generalize it uh, for other shapes. And uh, here you can see uh, our new method, uh, WKVR. Uh, this method, uh, uh, calculates uh, not only phase change, but also refraction. Uh, and uh, usually we have uh, uh, that uh, angle of refraction is small, but uh, phase shift uh, is large. And uh, here you can see uh, how it works qualitatively. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, first of all, we, we calculate entry point A and then uh, uh, we account for refraction and, uh, uh, and then we can uh, calculate phase shift parameter uh, or phase shift. And uh, so we can find uh, internal electric field at, at, at the point B. And uh, if we know uh, internal electric field, we can, uh, we can take it uh, to iterative solver in, in the other program. And uh, first of all, uh, we, uh, we wanted to, um, to understand how accurately uh, different approximations describe electric field, internal, uh, internal electric field. And uh, we uh, compared uh, different approximations with uh, exact solution at the uh, three points, A, B, C, uh, for uh, different uh, sizes. Uh, here you can see results for 100. And uh, here you can see results for incident uh, approximation for double WKB and uh, with reflection. And uh, here you can see results uh, for uh, fitting, re fitting results. And then we, uh, we conducted a fitting curve analysis 
and uh, here you can see results. And uh, the main, uh, the main uh, conclusion is that uh, we, uh, we find uh, what is the arrow uh, and uh, what is the form of uh, four different approximations. Uh, here you can see uh, forms and uh, uh, it is interesting that, that uh, WKBR approximation arrow uh, doesn't depend on the size parameter. And uh, uh, then we compared uh, electric field uh, maps uh, for exact field and for WKBR method. Uh, they uh, qualitatively match, uh, especially for optical soft particles when uh, the wave uh, amplitude decreases. And here you can see uh, uh, these waves. Uh, and uh, then we um, divided this part into the uh, different regions, uh, yeah. green region for one solution, uh, red region for double solution, and blue region for, uh, for no solution. And uh, here you can see uh, these uh, maps for different refractive indexes. And uh, uh, it means that uh, uh, in, at, at the, each point of uh, uh, green region, we have only one ray, incoming ray. And uh, at each point of uh, red region, we have uh, two different rays. Uh, and, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, and if we want to calculate accurate electric, uh, electric field uh, at this point, we have to sum, we have to sum uh, different uh, electric fields from two rays. And here you can see uh, two rays and also uh, second rays, uh, array uh, crosses uh, the focal line. And so uh, we have to account for additional phase uh, minus P divided two. And uh, here you can see uh, maps for double solution region for uh, parameter 500 and refractive index 1.1. Uh, he is uh, exact uh, case. Uh, he is uh, only sum of uh, two different uh, electric fields, and he is uh, sum with additional phase. And uh, uh, we can see that uh, interference fringes begin to coincide. Uh, and uh, here we can see a red line, and here we can see a red line. Uh, in the same parts. And uh, it is not obvious, but uh, if we'll change uh, the, scale, the scale, we'll have additional uh, uh, interference regions here. And uh, it will, uh, it will um, be, it begin to coincide with uh, this approximation. And uh, then we uh, conducted uh, uh, tests uh, on, on the sphere uh, in the other program. And uh, uh, this test uh, was uh, for, uh, for small sphere. Uh, here you can see results uh, of uh, convergence of uh, different approximations and of uh, exact solution. Uh, we, we just uh, used uh, different approximations at, at the first step of iterative solver uh, in the other program. And so uh, we uh, can see that, uh, uh, that incident uh, approximation and zero, approxima zero approximation uh, have um, bad convergence and uh, WKB and with refraction algorithms uh, have better convergence and uh, here results are the same. But uh, in this case, uh, we have also that uh, WKB with refraction faster than a standard algorithm and than other, uh, other algorithms. And uh, well, we also uh, condu uh, conducted a test for large sphere uh, here you can see results. Uh, and uh, the, yeah, it is interesting that uh, 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 at, uh, in this case, we have um, 
stagnation intervals and fast uh, convergence intervals. Um, but uh, previously it was uh, linear convergence. We have a linear convergence. And uh, uh, here we can see that uh, WKB uh, with refraction works better than other. And uh, in this case, it works better than other, than other approximations. And uh, here we can see uh, that uh, there is a huge difference of number of iterations between uh, WKBR and other approximations. And uh, let's move on to conclusions. Uh, on the basis of WKB, a more accurate method of approximating the electric field uh, WKB with a fraction is proposed for accelerating DDA uh, calculations for uh, different sizes and for optical soft particles. Uh, it was shown that uh, there are regions uh, with more than one solution. Uh, and we showed where WKB and WKBR works works better than, uh, than other approximations. And uh, the main uh, conclusion is uh, that WKBR uh, is uniform over size approximation. And uh, in the future, uh, uh, we want to generalize our uh, results for other shapes. Uh, but uh, here we have technical compl uh, complications. Uh, and uh, maybe we will use uh, ray tracing, um, but uh, uh, we can we uh, can use WKB, uh, which is implemented uh, in other. And uh, uh, I want to thank conference organizers, uh, Alexander Kamnashonkin, Russian Science Foundation. Uh, thank you for attention. I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for this great uh, presentation. So now we have time for a few questions from uh, from the audience. Let's wait a second or so. So let, let me ask you just uh, maybe that question, or hopefully it's not too much off topic. So, you know, you're looking basically here at a convergence or accelerating the convergence of the DDA. So, so it's just a general question here. So. Is there any, because when I look at DDA papers, right, it's the objects or spheres in this case, they always discretize into uniform subvolumes, right? The, the subvolumes or dipoles always have the same size. Would it be beneficial somehow to have non-uniform discretization? Is it something that is beneficial or have you thought about, or is there some fundamental limitation that, you know, would preclude using non-uniform dipole size? Uh, ah. Uh, you, uh, if if I uh, understand you, uh, the dipole size. No, no, we uh, have limitations uh, with dipole size uh, uh, that uh, um, maybe I can you rep repeat your question, right. please. No, no problem. Yeah. So basically, could you in a you know, in one object, have different dipole size. Yeah, some bigger, some, yeah, oh. some smaller. Is there any fundamental uh -huh. limitation to doing this? Um, I think that uh, that uh, there are uh, fundamental limitations. Maybe uh, when we uh, write uh, this, um, just a moment, uh, this equation. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not sure that. Uh, will have limitations. Um, maybe uh, um, maybe we can use uh, different sizes, uh, um, but uh, 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 I, will I, I, will, I will think about uh, your question. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. <laughs> or it was a little bit off topic, but I was just curious <laughs> because we were talking about you know optimization. so 